Hey everybody, Mr. Bennett here. We are going to do notes 1.3 and 1.3b. We're going to use these conversion examples down here at the bottom of the page to help us with the top of the page. So remember, in science, we always use metric. This is the international standard. Uh, so you guys are lucky you get to know two units of measurements. And each step in the metric system, which makes it a really easy system to use, is an increase by a multiple of 10 or a decrease by some divisible divisor of 10. And so we've got this number line here, we're gonna fill this in. So right here in the middle, we're gonna call this the base. So this is going to be quantity number one, and it would be something like grams, meters, or liters. So no prefix attached to these. Going to the left, we're gonna get bigger, and I'll do these in blue. So the larger units, this would be a deca. Deca is the prefix, so a decagram would be one, one step, so 10 grams. Then you have a hecta. Again, another increase of 10, so now we're at 10 times 10 is 100, so 100 grams or 100 meters or 100 liters would be a hecta meter, liter, or gram. And then finally, we have kilo. So a kilogram is a thousand because we're at 10, 100, 1000 steps aside. Going the other way, getting smaller, we have deci in the tenth spot. So one tenth of a gram is a decigram. And then we have centi. So you've seen centimeters before, so this is one hundredth of a meter, and then milli. Same thing, you've seen millimeters and you've used milliliters, so these are one thousandth of whatever your base unit is. And the great thing about metric is that we just need to multiply or divide by ten. And when we do that, we just swing our decimals. So let's take a look at what I mean. Here's the first example, 10 decimeters is equal to blank number of meters. And now this line here wrapped and it shouldn't have, so we're just gonna fill some in. So if I have 10 decimeters, lowercase d, capital, or lowercase m, we come back up to our number line. The question is how many meters is that equals some number of meters. So if I'm right here in the deci spot and I have 10, there's an implied decimal right there. I need to move one spot to my left, so my decimal comes one spot to my left, and this becomes 1.0. So our answer is one meter, 1.0 meters. And that's all we're doing on this number line, is we're swinging our decimals left and right. Let's take a look at another example. One gram is equal to blank number of kilos. So we have one lowercase gram, which means I'm right here in the middle, and I want to know how many kilograms that is so if I start let me get my units out of the way real quick get rid of those back to my pen so I have one gram I need to move one two three spots to my left so my decimal goes one two three spots and plants right there fill in your zeros so your answer is 0 0.001 kilograms that is one thousandth of a kilo and that's all we're doing as we're swinging back and forth. The quantity doesn't matter. So look at example number three really quick, and then you're going to be on your own. In example number three, we have 1547 meters is equal to blank number of kilometers. So remember, meters is one of these units here in the middle. So we have 1547 with an implied decimal, and we want to know kilometers. So we got to go one, two, three spots. My decimal goes one, two, three spots, and lands right here. So our answer is 1.547 kilometers. And that's, again, swing that decimal. Use your number line back and forth that you will have this available to you on test quizzes, things like that. So uh, make sure you know how that decimal moves. Make sure your number line is labeled correctly. And I will see you in class.